spirit over to you. You are a teacher. Teach us tonight. Enlighten our understanding. And let every one of us be blessed tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Please take your seat gloriously. In the scripture, there is account in Luke chapter 17. And the account of Luke chapter 17 is talking about ten lepers that Jesus Christ healed. And only one of them acknowledged what Jesus Christ has done. And he returned back to give thanks unto Jesus for what he has done. It's a privilege. It's not a right for Jesus Christ to do that. And that is why tonight, standing on this exalted altar, it's not a right for me to be here. But rather, it's a privilege. And in absentia, the Father and the Lord is not here. I believe his spirit is also here. I want to thank him for the privilege he has given unto me this evening. And I believe that there is no sweat anointing working in his life. We work for me this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. And also in the absentia of his sweet 16, I want to thank her for this privilege and all the pastorate. And for every one of you seated tonight, it will be your new dawn in the mighty name of Jesus. That will be your testimony and my testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight I will not be preaching, rather I'm going to be teaching. So tonight is not preaching time, it's teaching. I'm going to be uh, doing this evening. And we're going to be looking at a topic tied to cleanliness. Cleanliness. That is the topic of this evening. Cleanliness. Everybody likes cleanliness. If you come to this church, you enter where you want to sit, you expect that seat should be neat. If that seat is not neat, you will shift. You will not sit down there. That means everyone embraces what? Embraces uh, cleanliness. And that is why we want to know what is cleanliness. What is cleanliness? Cleanliness is a state or quality of being free from germs, dirt, trash, or waste. The state or quality of being free and clean from germs, dirt, trash, or waste. That is cleanliness. That is Oxford Dictionary meaning. Also, cleanliness is the degree to which people keep themselves and their surrounding clean. The state or the degree to which people keep themselves and their surrounding clean. That is what? Cleanliness. Now, we have different types of cleanliness. We have physical cleanliness, mental cleanliness, moral cleanliness, and also we have spiritual cleanliness. We have the different types of cleanliness. But for the emphasis tonight, where I want to speak on, so I'm going to speak on physical cleanliness. Physical cleanliness, that will be our center of concentration this evening. It was discovered in 18th to 19th century in the United States and in Europe that the expectant lifespan of uh, their people drastically reduced. So it now is a source of worry for everyone. Then we have a set of uh, preachers, missionaries. So they began to do research, take their Bible and begin to read. And I believe God opened their eyes, enlightened their understanding, and something jumped to them. And what happened, they discovered that 
There's something that was lacking in U.S. as a then, in 19th century, and also in Europe, that there are people engaged in poor hygiene. And because of that, it has affected them and has adverse effect. And since then, the missionary took it upon themselves and they introduced what is referred to as cleanliness doctrine. So they are preaching alongside with it as they are spreading the good news. They are so spreading cleanliness doctrine. And after that, the next 20 years, they discover that the expectant lifespan of their citizen started increasing. Praise the Lord. So that means cleanliness is a vital thing that we need to ensure that we put uh, into consideration. And when you are clean, in fact, cleanliness brings you closer to God. Because God is what? Is pure. God is holy. And God is what? Is clean. So when you practice cleanliness, it brings you closer to God. No wonder that the adage that say, cleanliness is what? Is next to godliness. It's not in the Bible, but it's an adage. Praise the Lord. Now, what does the Bible say concerning cleanliness? Let's look at Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 to 11. Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 to 11. I said tonight it's about teaching and not preaching. Say, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people. Say, Go unto the people. Said, And sanctify them today. You sanctify them today. And tomorrow, please put it there, and let them wash their clothes. God instructed Moses to inform his people. He said he should sanctify them that very day. Then after that day, the second day, they should go and wash their clothes. Why did God say they should go and wash their clothes? So that means God is interested to ensure that they are clean before him. Verse 11. Say, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. It means that for you to appear before the Lord, for them to appear before the Lord, first of all, you will be sanctified. After sanctified, you must wash yourself. Before you must wash yourself so that you can be clean. Before you can present yourself on the third day to the Lord. So that means God values cleanliness. Now let's look also, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. We want to look at what God talk about cleanliness. He says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. They let us what? cleanse ourselves from all fruitness of the flesh. That means whatsoever that is not of God. Dirtiness in your body. We are talking about physical aspect of it. That you should what? You should cleanse it. An evil spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Praise the Lord. So that means God wants you to be clean. He wants you to practice cleanliness. Your state of hygiene is supposed to be high because God cherishes it. Before you appear before him, he says you should be what? You should be clean. And that's why he instructed Moses to inform his people. Praise the Lord. Now, this evening, we are going to look at areas God wants us to experience physical cleanliness. I said our concentration tonight is all about physical cleanliness. What are the areas that God wants us to experience physical cleanliness? Number one, God wants us to keep our body clean. God 
want us to keep our body clean. That is the desire of God. And that is why what, what we have read in Exodus chapter 19, verse 10 to 11, when God instructed Moses to inform the Israelites that he should, sancti he should sanctify them and they should wash their what? Their clothes. They should wash their clothes and present themselves on the third day. So what it means that for us coming to the church, we need to wash our clothes. That means whatever you are putting on needs to be clean. You don't need to appear before the Lord in a dirty form. The type of dresses you wear also, it matters. Because before you appear before the Lord, he wants you to, be, to look very what? Decent and clean. Now, if this era is the era of Moses, that we need to be sanctified by Moses, and he said we should wash our clothes, now we are put on our clothes right now, we are inside the uh, auditorium. Now, can we present ourselves to the law and we will be acceptable? So you need to ask yourself that what you are putting on this evening, by the grace of God, God's servant is not the prophet over this commission. If God instructed him now to sanctify each one of us, and what we are putting on now, we should, he should present us. All on Sunday, he should present every one of us the way we dressed. Can God accept us the way we dressed? Can the bishop sanctify us? Because if you know that the way you are going to appear before the Lord is not good enough, he cannot sanctify you. So in essence, what we are saying is that whatsoever you are putting on, the clothes you are putting on, you should do what? It should be clean. Clean is not only washing. The way you dress is important because you are coming before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe the time of Moses, if you wear a transparent uh, uh, cloth or dresses, that is showing your physique, Moses will not sanctify you. He will tell you to go back. Why? Because he knows that God will not behold dirtiness. If you appear before him, you may likely go. But we are in the era of grace. That is why anything goes. Nothing can happen. In fact, if I even dress like this and, and climb the altar, nothing will happen. The grace will cover me. That is our notion. But God said no. Before you appear before him, you need to be clean because God is clean, God is holy, and God is pure. So you be mindful of the way you appear before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not only that, what of our body? Yes, we are engaged in fasting and prayer now. Does it mean that when you are praying and you are fasting, that we shouldn't take our bath? Maybe that is where we make us very holy. When you don't take your bath, at least for the past seven or eight days, it means that you are really practicing that uh, fasting and prayer. You are great number one. A plus. No. God does not like dirtiness. Praise the Lord. And that is why, for the fact that we are fasting and we are praying, does not mean that we should not clean our body. Does not mean we should not wash our body. We don't take our bath. Sometimes we believe that if we are fasting, now maybe we are about coming to the church now, we're supposed to brush our teeth because we have not eaten for some time since morning. And I discovered that when I was also researching, those people that practice hygiene, oral hygiene, I meant to understand that only one tooth had between 1,000 to 100,000 bacteria. You check only one of your teeth. At the surface, so 
between 1,000 to 100,000 bacteria. That's what it settles on it. Now, if you don't even brush at all for the whole day, it says it's between 100,000, no, between 1 million to 1 billion bacteria settle on the surface of your teeth. If you don't even brush. So, for the fact that you are coming to the church, does not mean that if you brush, as a usual, you say, I've, I've, I've spoiled my, my fasting. No. Because God likes cleanliness. He wants you to be clean. He wants you to be pure. So that you don't sit beside uh, your neighbor, and your neighbor, when you are talking, is looking at another side. That is not of God. Praise the Lord. How do you present your body before Christ as you are coming to the church? Now, let's look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Studio. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. What does it signify here? That should you cut your flesh. Now you are coming to present yourself on Sunday. You are coming to present yourself on this Thursday. That is midway service. You are coming to present yourself now we are having fasting and prayer. The scriptures say in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28. It says you should not cut your flesh. Like, for example, nowadays we find out that male, boys, even men, we cut their, one of their uh, uh, ear and put earring. And they'll come to the church and nothing happen. And the Bible says, please put it there again. What did the Bible say concerning that? Ye shall not. Ye shall not. It's a commandment. It's not that if you like. Ye shall not make any cutting in your flesh for the dead. Nor print any marks. Even some women, only one who is not enough. They will make up to five or six and put all manner of earring. And you are coming to present yourself before the Lord. And the Bible says, ye shall not. Will God accept you? And accept your prayer, ask yourself the question and answer it. Praise the Lord. In this big part of it, put it there. Because it's the Bible that says so. We believe in that Bible. Say, no, no, print any marks upon you. Print any marks. That mark is like a tattoo. Print tattoo. Some of us are carrying tattoo. In our body. And it's like a, like a guy. It's like a show-show things. It's what is raining now. If you happen to be in the uh, entertainment industry, you must put a, a, a tattoo. If you're in the music industry, you put tattoo. Even maybe preacher now and this also will put tattoo. Yes, it's what is uh, raining. Put it there for us. Let us see it. Say, ye shall not. That is what the Bible says. Print any map. Praise the Lord. So it means that if you are putting on tattoo, in fact, if you are applying into any uh, force or paramilitary or uh, 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 army, if you are carrying tattoo, immediately they disqualify you. They won't enroll you. Go and ask for those who put on. If you are a guy or you are a lady, and you are, they see, because you are going to remove all, everything about you. If it is lady, it's only Brescia and your pint that will be there. Women will be checking you. If you are a man, it's only that will remain. They will check from your head to your toe. 
If you have any tattoo in any part of your body, this morning, if I go, you cannot join police. You can't join army. So if government can reject it, how um, much more God that created you and gave you instruction, like the one he gave to Adam, don't eat this one. Adam said, no, I will follow my wife. Eat. And that's what put you and I in this condition. Now he has told you, don't put on this tattoo. You say it doesn't matter. It's what is raining. It's entertainment. If you don't put it on, you are not on board. Don't let that board board you into the hell. May the Lord open our understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, there are so many things we need to do concerning our body so that we can be presentable and God can hear us. Since God is clean, God is pure, God is holy. Now somebody can say, oh, come to church and he's smoking. He will tell you, show me in the Bible where they say thou shalt not smoke. If you can show me, I will not smoke again. Open the scripture, open the chapter, and give me the verse. If God really knows that there's an alternative for you to inhale and breathe out, I believe instead of God wasting his breath when he created Adam, he will just gather refuse, gather grasses, put fire, and that smoke will just brush through Adam, and Adam will heal it and become a human being. So do you think that God doesn't have that sense? Instead of wasting his breath. God has the sense. He breathed into Adam. Fresh one. Not smoke. And became human being. And begin to breathe. For you, you say, no, God, you don't know how to do it well. It's as if you forgot. And you begin to smoke yourself, like as you smoke fish. And when you do that, you come to the church and lift out your hand to God. And you are the one to dance most. And you say, show me in the Bible. So are you presenting yourself in a clean way, in a pure way? And you know God is clean and pure. He doesn't behold iniquity. Now let's first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. First Corinthians 6 19. Say your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Studio. I hope we are not sleeping. So he's talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. He's talking about that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If our body is a temple of Holy Spirit, it means that I don't believe that if smoke is there, that the Holy Spirit will dwell inside you. When you are smoking, Holy Spirit will leave you because it will allow you to do what you want to do. So when you, 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 you repent and give it up, the Holy Spirit will now come back. Somebody can even be smoking, say it doesn't matter. Even Holy Spirit, as I, as I finish now, I'll begin to speak in tongue. Praise the Lord. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. What does somebody can be taking alcohol? He say it doesn't matter. Show me in the Bible. At least, they ask Timothy, take a little small wine to garnish your tummy. So that your body can be correct. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Where is it in the Bible? Say that's not a uh, drink. Even in the Bible, I think Jesus Christ turned uh, water to wine. And what are you saying? Do you know the type of wine? Were you there? Everybody has his own portion to support his, what he's doing. Even a thief, you have had in this uh, uh, on this altar when they are giving testimony. A, a, a kidnapper. Telling Pastor Bryce, say, I know you are a pastor. Please pray for us so that we can be succeeding. Yes. 
I also made a research. I found out that when you take alcohol, now the, the, the chemical that is inside goes into the brain. And I found out that a, a, a land that is settled between the, the, the cell, the signal cells. And when it's settled between the signal cell in your brain, when, as you are taking the alcohol, until you are intoxicated, even though you, are not, you don't read that level, it will settle in between it. The signal, you know, if you, if you study very well in terms of uh, the, uh, the body system, you don't know that there's electrical system in the body, just like this light. So in your brain, as you are taking the alcohol, it will settle in between the signal of the cell. And what happened? That is why if somebody is intoxicated, is drunk, he will see the father and say, see this ant. He will see elephant and say, see this uh, rat. Because this chemical happened to separate the cells that are supposed to take signal. And because of that, it will have partial contact. You know, if you have uh, uh, electric ion and you have a partial contact, or electric bulb, it will bring uh, what? Light. It will off. That is what is happening. That is why you cannot walk normal. You will see human being you thought is good. Because your brain is doing partial contact. And when you are done with it, you come to the church and you are the one to even jump and dance most. And they say, oh, that brother can dance. That sister, oh, when he dance here, yeah, God already answered the prayer. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. In what area again? Keeping our environment neat. Keeping our environment neat is very important. Don't like a, cleaning, uh, a clean environment. A clean environment always enhances healthy living. So it is our responsibility to clean our environment. God will not come down to clean your house. Yes, God's servant said, it will gladden his heart one day if you ask, is anyone sick that should come out and nobody will come out. Yes. Many, many times, God has answered our prayer. He made us to be sickness free. But what happened is that there are things that we are doing that we are inviting sickness to ourselves. You may pray and fast and anointing may stop snake, spiritual snake, to enter your house. But anointing cannot stop physical snake to creep into your house if your environment is bushy or full of refuse. You can take anointing oil and pour there. No evil shall come. No creepy things shall enter. No snake, no scorpion. And at the back, by the side of your house, even in your, in your house, in your room, rat is jubilating. And you know, rat causes what? Lassa fever. You don't, you don't clean it. And you pour anointing oil everywhere. Spiritually, God will not allow Lassa fever to get to you. But for the fact that your environment is not clean, Lassa fever will come. So you are the one that invited it. Of course. God said, make sure that you are clean. Praise the Lord. Cleaning of environment is very important. So that we can be healthy. What of like Nancy mother? How do you prepare the food of your babies? Like some, after feeding the baby with a filling bottle, instead of washing it immediately, and even sterilize, they will cook it there and put it there. And you know bacteria like anything sugary. The next five minutes or ten minutes, it will surprise you to note if you culture that remaining part of it and take it to the microscope or lab, 
You will tell how many millions of bacteria that is there. And some people, when they want to pray the second, they say, I just finished it now. I just kept it now. Let me add another one to it. A child that will be healthy. You have anointed the child. The child is walking in the Holy Ghost. But now, because of unhygienic preparation of the food of that baby, just for you to clean that filling bottle, wash it very well, sterilize it, boil water. I could remember when we are still nursing baby. Thank God we are not nursing baby again. I will say, ah, you just finished. I will tell my wife, you just finished feeding this child now within an eight hour. Say, hey, I, will, I, will, I will have to go and uh, put all the uh, 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 water again, boil, put inside. Say, ah, are you not stressing yourself? You say, I have to make it clean. That is why I thank God for that. The children that God has given out to me, one day we have not gone to the hospital to stay there, apart from immunization. Because we take it very serious. There are things that you don't pray for. It's not everything they pray for. God has given you brain because he created you in his own image. God is a creator. God is a thinker. He has created you so that you can make use of your brain and allow him to rest from certain, certain things. But we still bother God because of either our laziness or carelessness. God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All are you selling? You have kiosk. You know this period now is uh, Amatan period. Dry, uh, uh, dry season. Beko is passing and God has helped you. You have a good location and you are selling Gary. As Beko pass, pass through, it will raise dust. The next thing to settle on that Gary. And you think that somebody that is living in that vicinity is not seeing it. Then they will go to another neighbor that use waterproof to cover his own gari. Then your own that you expose it and you are poor anointing there. Oh. The anointing is working. Nobody comes to buy. You think that they, don't, they don't see. But that's, if you go and buy that gari, but you don't have appendix. Yes. Because you, your common sense will tell you that you should also use waterproof to cover it. Sanitize your environment. Make your environment clean so that customer can come. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, cleaning of our environment, neatness, tends to make us to live long. Taking care of our body, taking care of our environment, even our company, where we work, to ensure that we live long, that we are not, uh, we don't fall sick, and it will increase our productivity. It will bring satisfaction. It will bring productivity. And I pray that as we imbibe the culture of cleanliness in our life, as an individual, as a family, as a church, that when we are in the church, we say the, the, the church, as the Bible says, is the house of prayer. But this time around, some people, some member, who go out, buy biscuit, buy bottled water, buy uh, uh, snacks, bring it to the church. After eating, they will drop it. They will leave it there. Leave the chaff, leave the wrapper, leave the water bottle. From there, you don't know that you are not safe. He said, my house shall be a house of prayer. No wonder Jesus Christ, he entered, he saw them buying, selling, some people are eating inside. He flogged all of them, come out. So we should keep uh, the church, because it's the house of the Lord, clean. You don't drop things there. If you see it, pick it and put it inside your pocket. That is what? To ensure that our environment is tidy, to ensure that we, we appear before the Lord clean. And as we do so, it shall be a new dawn for us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That will be your testimony and my testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Are you blessed? Lift your voice this evening and receive grace for a life of cleanliness. Receive grace for a life of cleanliness. Clean spiritually, clean physically in all areas of our lives. Can we lift our voices this evening and receive grace for a life of cleanliness? I trust that that word has blessed you. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I receive grace for a life of cleanliness. Lord, we receive grace for a life of cleanliness. We receive grace for a life of cleanliness. Father, we give you the glory and we give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Shout aloud, amen. If you are truly blessed by that word, can you jam your hands together for Jesus? Please, I just want to find out if anyone has a testimony, if you have a testimony to, to share from what has done in your life. If you have a testimony, as our daddy usually encourages, if you have a testimony, please come out to share with us. All right, then let's take the next few minutes and begin to speak to the Lord concerning the issues of our lives. The Bible says we should bring forth our strong reasons. Can you lift your voice and begin to speak over those issues of your life and present them? The Bible says if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Begin to produce your strong reasons in this year of new dawn and expect God to answer. Lift your voice. Can we rise on our feet and give him thanks? Let's give him thanks for answers. We have confidence and once we pray according to his will, he hears us. Father, we give you the glory. Father, we bless your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Can we put our hands towards the communion and declare that by this communion, we receive grace for a life of cleanliness. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. As we partake of this communion, anything unclean in our lives, let it be removed. Can you point your hands to this communion and begin to declare 
Father, by the table tonight, we receive strength in the name of Jesus. We receive healing of every kind. Father, we give you the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Father, this table tonight is blessed as the body and the blood of Jesus. By the communion, let grace for cleanliness be released upon our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is unclean in our lives this evening, by the communion, we declare it is removed in the name of Jesus. Father, by this table, we declare strength is released upon us in the name of Jesus. And if anyone is sick or afflicted in any way, let the power of your body and your and your blood remove every such sickness in the name of Jesus. Thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please have your seat as we receive the communion. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. shout hallelujah I can't hear your voice I said somebody shout hallelujah today is day 10 God has helped us can we lift our voices and give God the glory and the praise somebody thank him for his help thank him for his strength give him glory and praise answers to our prayers all through this time give him glory and praise for the things he has established lift your voice and thank him for the battles he has fought on our behalf for intervention, for help on every side. Our new done blessings have been established. Lord, we give you the glory. Father, we bless your name. Thank you and thank you, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. Thank you for the blessings released tonight. Thank you for answers to all our prayers. Receive our praise and adoration in the name of Jesus. As we go tonight, your peace and your presence goes with us in the name of Jesus. Let your grace back in this house. Go with everyone in the name of Jesus. Father, give everyone a tangible testimony in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and we give you praise. We declare our paths are prosperous. No evil comes near our dwelling place in the name of Jesus. To you be your glory and praise. Thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Shout a louder amen. Shout a believing amen. Please be reminded tomorrow is our Thursday service, so come uh, ready to worship God with your offerings. It's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence in the name of Jesus. Can we share the goodness of the Lord together? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'll go for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the gospel truth. Why are we here? To be what? Twenty twenty. It's a new dawn. God bless you. Have a good night.